Good afternoon and welcome back everybody to our top three best, worst, and changes that didn't go far enough for Warhammer 40k 9th edition. Uh, today we're going to talk about the worst three changes and we're going to keep this one kind of short because I don't want to talk about the worst changes so much as I, they're not really huge things that have affected the game that much from edition 8 to 9. They're just kind of annoyances that I don't really understand why why they did it. It doesn't feel like it's made a big difference, but they did it anyways. So the worst three changes, uh, number one, is the table sizes. You know, after 30 years of four by eight tables, are we saying now that these old tables all gotta be tossed out? You know, generally, it almost felt like a good change when the game was first played, and it kind of felt like maybe melee armies would stand a better chance, and that they were bringing everything closer together to make sure that the game was faster, right? But after playing a few games, it just seems that it doesn't really improve the opportunity for melee armies to have that first turn rush across the board. It seems more like actually what's happening is there's less room for these melee armies to kind of maneuver around the table or hide in case they don't get that first turn advantage. And this creates a situation where these first turn melee armies are just getting shot off the table because they have nowhere to hide or they don't know if they're going to go first yet or you know just the deployment makes it a lot more awkward because when you are that close even the basic infantry weapons are in range and a lot of them are almost in rapid fire range already so at, at the end of the day i think that these smaller tables actually give a better turn one advantage to a lot of these uh shooting focused armies because it's not good to have a game in which it really depends on who gets to go first on whether you're going to win or not? So, yeah, I can see why it says, okay, now that we can run the guys across the board on the first turn and make it closer to get there, it would it would feel like it's better. But really, all that happens is, sure, maybe you can make the charge, but now you're definitely going to be in range of the firepower. So maybe you won't even have the opportunity to go make the charge because you're at the bottom of turn one. So I, I don't really understand how this makes any difference it just feels like an off change that didn't really need to happen and i know i said these are the minimum table sizes but you know every competitive game is not going to be played on this minimum table size this requirement that they they've attached now so you're going to see a lot more armies that are going to start considering holding things in reserve simply because they don't want to get shot on the first turn so rather than having to just wither the fire or weather the fire this first turn they're going to wait in reserve and then because the board is smaller maybe they can make the charge off of the reserve but even then you can't move after the reserve anyways so you're probably going to get shot off the table anyways so really the table size issue it goes back to just generally the power of shooting in this edition and beyond that more on a personal level you know i've created a lot of terrain and tables based around this four by eight size that's been around for like 30 years and i'm sure i'm not the only one there's definitely people that have whole hobby rooms built around a four by eight table and now all of a sudden they're saying that you have to cut off the little edges of your play area just because you know that's that's not okay and i i get that the game evolves and they got to make these changes at certain points but you know in the same way that for a while everybody was upset that the tactical marine, the classic space marine, was going to be pushed out in favor of the uh, intercessor and the primaris marines. I think you can say that about the tables, and even more so about the tables, because a lot of people put a lot of care into these tables that they've created over time to make the game feel more like an actual battlefield, to make it a lot more fun to actually play. But now we see the situation where you're trying to plan around this, and you're putting little dice around the edges so they can note the borders a little easier. But it just it doesn't make any it doesn't make any effect on the actual end result of the game really it just makes a result on or a change to the very start of the game and i think it just exacerbates a lot of the turn one issues that are in this game right now you know the spamming of of stratagems the spamming of shooting just making sure that at the at the at the onset you just do whatever you want so you know, I understand that it was meant for melee armies, but I don't think it benefited melee armies in the way they were considering. And I understand that it was also to make the games faster, but I don't think the table size or the size of the battlefield what is what was making games drag on. So it, it's, a, it's a nonsensical change. It kind of feels like they're just trying to force some more of their terrain out. You know, now they have these sets that can kind of go together to make this table size. But I don't like it. 
it, it just seems silly, a little bit fr frivolous, and it, it just adds another wrinkle that people can argue about into the future. You know, you're going to show up at a table, some guy's going to have a table that he's been building over the last 10 years, and now it looks great, but it's 4 by 8 so you have to agree that we're going to play on this game table size. And then if you win on this table size and the opponent wanted to play on the smaller table size, they're going to say, oh, well, we played on the bigger table, and that's why you, you know. It, it doesn't make sense. It, it causes too much friction. It, it, you know, devalues a lot of the work that's been put into, you know, this very static part of the game that's really important but very static. So it, I don't like it. It's a, it's a stupid change. It doesn't make any sense. The second change that really, really bothers me it's something that bothered me in last edition as well, uh, especially now that we've moved away from these kind of generic universal rules, is the glossary of terms. I guess now we're moving back to the you know, universal rules, but really the, the glossary of terms, they were touting it as being one of the most significant changes that they were planning for the edition and in this rule book. And yet somehow every time I need to find a term, it is in the glossary. Some of them are indexed at the front and others are in the glossary at the back. Why is it not unified? If something is in the index, you might as well just put it in the glossary too. What, is another two pages of print gonna you know, break the bank at, at Games Workshop? Let's be real here, like, whenever I think, oh, how do I charge? I don't wanna have to look in the index to see if the, if the charge rules are in the index or if they're in the, in the glossary. And this happens constantly. It constantly, constantly, constantly. I have to look at either the index or the glossary just to figure out where you actually need to look for things or when you want to look at you know mission order or mission types or crusade information you have to look at the index to find out what that page number is as opposed to the glossary and i understand the glossary of terms is meant for some of these new special rules that are coming out but at the end of the day it's not unified in any capacity again just like i was saying about the stratagems in the last video how you just constantly have to pour over your your stratagems to make sure that you're getting every ounce of, of power out of them at every single turn of the game and you have to like look at everybody else's stratagems as well to make sure that you're not being cheated in any kind of capacity this glossary of terms in the main rule book it just doesn't go far enough to avoid that constant flipping of back and forth in the pages and again We've been told in 8th and 9th edition that a big goal here of unifying so much of this information, the games go faster, and they're just not going faster. And I don't think it has anything to do with the actual rule set or the actual way the game plays or the table size or any of that other garbage. At the end of the day, the reason the games take so long is because there's so much information spread out across so many different books, so many different pages, and nothing to direct you right where you need to be. And that's a problem. That's a huge problem. You want to be able to have this book because it feels nice to have the book and open directly to the page that you want. But because the glossary and the index are so separate and they're so not unified, it takes so long to go back and forth that I find myself trying to create my own shortcuts on my end to make this work. Don't tell us you're going to have this amazing glossary of terms that's going to make it so much faster to look everything up when at the end of the day, that is not going to be the case. Everything is still taking just as long. And most of that is just because you spend as much time flipping pages when you're playing a Warhammer game as you do playing the damn Warhammer game. So, no, I don't think the glossary of terms did anything. I actually think it made it more confusing because half the time you go look in the glossary, see if you find something. It's not there, so then you have to flip back to the index to figure out where that is. And then once you figure that out, you flip back over to the page that's actually on. And then you mark it with your little string, and then you go back and forth, and you do that every single time you want to look up a rule. And I'm sure you'll resolve some of that once you get the rules all kind of memorized. But now that there are so many rules, and there are so many edge cases of things happening, you're not going to be able to just know it immediately. And for new players, it's even worse. Or not even new players, returning players from 7th edition, where the game has changed so drastically, that you would think they would have thought this through some more, and not just tell us, oh, it's going to be so good, and then they release it, and it's just so meh. You know, uh, I, I do like how they have some of those bubbles that pop out and they, sh they kind of give you a, a summary of, of the, the way everything works. That's, that's cool. I like how they added that in, you know, so you have to read the wall of text every time. So the wall of text gives you, you know, more specifically how everything works out. And then they have the pop out that shows you kind of a, a watered down version of what the rule is trying to say. I like that a lot. And that was one of the things they advertise along with the glossary of terms. So they can keep that, that, that part. That's fine. But the glossary of terms, 
Man, put everything in there. Two more pages of just exactly where everything is. Where the charge rules are, where the movement rules are, where the psychic rules are, where the mission types are, where the crusade types, everything, everything. If it's in the index, it should also be in the glossary. And then finally, the last worst change is the turn order. And this is something that has been a problem since since forever, frankly. I, I don't understand why they didn't take this opportunity to change how the turn order works. You know, they, they, they made one little change in the way that the game starts. So instead of, you know, the defender getting to choose whether they go first or not before they even deploy, after deployment now, you roll off to see who goes first. So you kind of have to deploy understanding that you might not go first or you might go first. But following up with that, the problem is that they still have it so that we're going on this Alpha, beta, alpha, beta, top of turn, bottom of turn, top of turn, bottom of turn. That just really wrecks the feeling of the game. You know, they wanted to make it feel like it's a tactical, strategic, actual battle happening so that everything is represented in a fashion that it's all moving at the same time, you know, turn, 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 turn. So why is it that at the end of turn one, which should have started at the same time for both players, technically, if you're looking at this from, you know, a timeline perspective of how the battle plays out, Everything is moving at the same time. Yet while everything is moving at the same time, the first, the top of the turn person is moving with 1,500 points of units, while the bottom of the turn person is moving with 1,200 points of units. Why didn't they af affect this in any way? One of the biggest reasons why Space Marines and all these other uh, armies are doing so well right now is because they can just shoot you off the table in the first turn. So they started talking about doing the Age of Sigmar, you know, style of of turn alternating or rolling off at the beginning of every turn but even that i don't think would fix it i don't understand why we're not playing a game where everybody chooses one unit in the same way that you deploy i go you go i go you go i go you go why don't why don't do that for just the general turns you know okay i go first i'm going to move one of my smaller infantry squads and then shoot that one because i i, I want to see where their their enemy is going to be moving and then they go and they respond with one of their bigger squads to get a shot on that infantry squad you know that would make it feel more dynamic that would make it feel more like a like a real battle and it would also make it feel like both players are playing i can't tell you how many times i've played a game in the last two editions where by the end of the top of turn one i don't want to play the game anymore because i've already lost 500 points of units and i haven't even shot yet so so that's not fair that's not a fun game you know, when you play a strategy game, when you play StarCraft, it's not like, you know, you st <laughs> you start the game with 15 SCVs on one side and the other guy only has 11 SCVs. That's not how it works. You both have 15 SCVs and if you want to go in early, it's a risk-reward thing. If you don't go in early, it's not, you know, you get to turtle up. It's It's a game where every little decision makes a bigger impact down the line. So if there was this alternating kind of turn order, Maybe then we would have we would see a strategic, you know, the strategic back and forth between both sides. But currently, it doesn't. It does, that's not what's happening. Like I said, you're just slamming out stratagems, slamming out as many firepower as you can at the top of your turn, unless you're a melee army, which in the case you're trying to cower in fear until it's over, and then you do your turn. You know, that's that's not cool. I think there's obviously a problem here and i think it's a really easy fix another one just that the glossary of terms could have been an easy fix the turn order could have been an easy fix and the thing is you know they they have it it's so ingrained now to to do it the way that they have it set up that to try and change it in any sort of capacity to or, you know to try and test it out on your own play group is difficult because a lot of people just want to follow the rules as it is and if you change the rules too drastically then you're getting into the place where it's not even the same game anymore and i don't play any other tabletop games so i don't know if there's other games that do that but it just seems like a natural and, and, and regular idea for me to set up the rules so that you can have all of turn one there's not a top and a bottom it's i go you go i go you go i go you go and that way it's more interactive you know they have a joke in hearthstone where for a while, you know, there's some balances that are pretty bad because, you know, there's the other player can do a weren't turn kill on OTK. They gather enough cards in their hand and they just knock you out of the game from 30 health, just like that, right? Druid has been good at it. Mage can do it sometimes in the past. Freeze Mage is always uh, one of those causing some problems. But, you know, they <sighs> it's fun and interactive is what they would say. Oh, this game is so fun and interactive. And that's kind of how it feels with Warhammer, except 
with Hearthstone, you can just turn it on and start playing. With Warhammer, you drove all the way across town, you put everything down, and then you got to sh demolish because you didn't get the top of turn one. Game over. You know, that that that's something that needs to be fixed, and I'm not quite sure why it hasn't been addressed yet, especially with kind of the general feeling that that's being kind of going around right now with this turn order. So, you know, those are, those are the top worst changes or, you know, changes that they didn't make, I guess. But I think, you know, in my play group, we're going to start play testing with the turn order because, you know, we're getting tired of either one person wins or the other person wins just off the top of the first turn. We started doing the numbers and literally there's like a 90% difference in, in that first turn go. And, you know, we don't get a coin handed into our hand like in Hearthstone to try and offset that. And even in Hearthstone, where they do give you that coin to make it a difference, that's a good version of, of why there's a turn one advantage. In that game, it's a 60% win rate for those that go first against a 40%. And in Arena, it's even worse. So just saying, you know, this is something that really needs to be considered the turn order. It's something that wasn't affected at all in this edition going into ninth. So I, I'm not quite sure why they left that out, why they didn't change it in any way. It's obviously a big, big problem in the game. But my local group is going to start playtesting with alternating turns, uh, alternating units in a turn, and see how that works because we want to have fun. Just because the rules say, no, you can't have fun, you better min-max, that's not how we want to play it. So we're going to try stepping away a little bit from the rule book because we're gonna, you know, we are gonna, you we can't continue following this way because people are just starting to get too mad about it. So generally, we'll see how it goes. But so the worst three changes, table sizes, totally unnecessary. You know, too many people have too much terrain and too many tables and whole rooms of their house built around it. And, you know, too many gaming bars and, and, and you know, comic book stores and all these little places are built around this table size that's been around for 30 years. But now they're going to tell us that we got to shrink it. That, I don't like that at all. Glossary of terms. Don't tell me it's going to be an end-all, fix-all for flipping back and forth all the time into these books when you're just making it worse because you have to go front and back, front and back just to figure out where the hell I am. Uh, so that wasn't a good change. And the turn order, finally, the fact that there was no change there is the worst change possible. So, you know, please let me know in the comments if you think this is a, you know, if I'm onto something, if, you know, maybe some other people have tried changing the turn order, if you guys have worked in trying to kind of alter the rules in any capacity to see if really there's a way to make this game slightly more fun than it is right now. But, or if you just totally disagree and I just gotta figure out how to play the game better. Uh, let me know. Uh, and please like and subscribe to this video if, if you like what we're doing here. So thank you and have a good night.